Maybe I should call it books I would buy if I had the money. I don't know. Oh, also, I'll leave the books that I talk about linked down below. <laughs> I'm sorry, editing Brittany. That's going to be annoying to try and... I talked about so many. Not every book I passed, just the ones that I, like, actually talked about. Hey, everyone. It's me again, Brittany, and I'm here today with a bit different of a video. I'm actually really excited for this. Um, obviously, you can see by the title, we are looking at books that I want to buy, looking at pretty books. I'm still not sure exactly what I'm naming it. Something along the lines of window book shopping with me or pretty books I wish I could buy, but I'm saving money because I have to move so I can't buy books. Some, I don't know. I want to get out my shopping urge somehow without actually shopping. And I thought that this would be kind of a fun idea because I get comments all the time on every video I make. I wish I could buy this. I don't have money to buy these books, like so on and so forth. There's always comments about wishing you could buy the books I'm talking about or that you are now indebted because you are buying the books that I am talking about, which I am sorry for. Don't worry, that, that happens to me all the time too with everything I watch. I am the prey of advertisers, I suppose. I want to get out my shopping urge, but I can't really be buying books. So I think that we're just going to look through books that are either like coming out soon or quite literally stunning editions of books that I've wanted to buy for ages and I just haven't bitten, bitten the bullet yet. And we can talk about it. I was actually thinking when coming up with this video idea that it could also be fun to do a version of this where we go book shopping or look at the new releases or new books that are coming out and then maybe giving you like a backlist style title that you may have in your book collection or that your library may have more access to that's really comparable to that plot. That one will have a little bit more research in it, I think, or it can be kind of off the cusp, kind of how this one is. We're just going for it. I really don't know what we're gonna see today. So I have my iPad here and we're just gonna go through Goodreads maybe, Barnes and Nobles potentially, Amazon. I'm not sure. We're just gonna go through it and we're just gonna talk about some of the books that I would be buying right now if I had the funds. I hope this is fun. I hope this isn't boring. All right, I'm gonna scoot over Ugh, just a touch. Let's start the screen recording. I know you might think it's 10.30 a.m., but no. It's 10.30 p.m. You know me better. There is literally no rhyme or reason. I've had people ask me before if I would do like an iPad, what's on my iPad kind of tour. It's not impressive. It's really not. I've organized my phone. I've not organized my iPad. Anyways, let's start with, let's start with Barnes and Noble. There's something in my cart. All right, well, let's just see. What, what was in my cart? What did I think about buying? Oh, I actually, I bought this. We're off to a weird start. Let's start books, obviously. Yeah, sure, let's do bestsellers. Let's do the top 100. I feel like I know New York Times bestsellers, but what's their top 100? Is it gonna be New York Times bestsellers? Oh, I should have said YA. Oh yeah, teens and YA. Cool. <laughs> Maybe I should have said new releases. Yeah, okay, we're gonna start with new releases. That makes way more sense. Books, departments. Okay, fiction, what? Wouldn't it be under departments? Browse? New releases you need right now. Tell me. Tell me all about it, Barnes & Noble. Oh, we're already seeing a couple that I had wanted. I'm just gonna zoom in a little. I feel like this grid is not giving me what I want. All right, right off the bat, we already have one that I wish I could buy. Um, this is Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully. This was on the list for the books that I was anticipating this year. I don't think I ended up talking about it, but it sounds so cool. This just sounds definitely up my alley. It sounds fantastical and not really fantastical, I suppose. It just seems like a really intriguing novel that's not only a thriller, but seems to kind of like delve into a lot of intense topics. I don't know. And look at how beautiful this cover is. Oh yeah, let's just add it to my wish list. Yeah, I do have a wish list called Pretty Books. <laughs> Maybe we'll go through that in a moment, but let's go back first. Downstairs Girl, that looks interesting. I don't know, it's giving me kind of like Victorian vibes. Chain of Iron, I know guys, I still haven't, I still haven't read Chain of Gold. I swear I have plans to, I just haven't gotten to it yet. So soon. The Gilded Ones, I got an edition of that in the most recent Owl Crate. Imagine me. Did anyone ever end up reading this? I feel like I didn't see anything about it on the book community and I know personally I didn't pick it up. It's just the book right before this was so bad that I have no interest in getting Imagine Me. Imagine that, right? Ooh, A Vow So Bold and Deadly. This one, this one's tricky because this is the third one? What? Oh, 
Well, I guess first I would need the second one. Did I, like, miss that? Did I miss this completely? Probably. I miss a lot of things. I know that I feel like I'm on social media a lot. I'm not, though. I'm really not. I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. I don't know what the second book was called, but I don't have that one either. I only ever read A Curse So Dark and Lonely, and it was good. I appreciated it. It just didn't stun me in any way. To be fair, I think I was reading it right as I was, like, about to enter my, like, official reading slump mode, where, like, I was kind of just tired of fantasy and reading physically in general, so maybe that's why. But I just feel like I didn't hear much about the second or third book. I don't know. Let me know how you guys felt about that series or the rest of the series. No spoilers, obviously, please. Ooh, We Free the Stars. This is definitely one that I wish I could buy right now. I had mixed feelings about We Hunt the Flame. I've talked about this many times. They weren't bad necessarily. It was just kind of, I feel like, first book issues, you know? She was a debut author. There was bound to be some things that just didn't flow well. And I feel like with experience, we're gonna be totally fine. So I was definitely interested though in how the story would continue. Wish I could get that. And that cover is Stunning. Stunning. Yoke. That looks like a cute book. I don't know. Oh, like egg yolk. I don't like eggs. I'm sure that it has nothing to do with eggs. Or actually, let's see. I don't know. Oh, this is sad. It looks like it has to do with two sisters that had stopped talking to each other for years. And then one of the sisters gets diagnosed with cancer and reaches out to her little sister for support. And it just kind of goes through like all of their screaming fights, calculated jabs, and laugh out loud moments. Have their relationship evolve into a sisterhood? I might be one of the only, only children. I feel like it's more common for an only child to have wanted a sibling. Personally, I think it would have been interesting because I would want to see what my parents' features would look like on someone else, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Maybe I'd be able to pick them out on my own face then. I remember my mom had asked me when I was like really, really little, like two, if I wanted any siblings and I was like, no, don't you dare. And then she didn't, thank goodness, because I just couldn't, I don't know, I didn't want, I didn't want siblings. I still think seeing sister stories though, or like just good sibling relationships is really cute in novels. I don't know, that one seems very sad though. <laughs> Uh, Wings of Ebony. Wait, I was really interested in this. Yeah, this was actually in my most anticipated books. Oh, it's already out. Hmm. If I haven't already, I'm gonna link my most anticipated books for this year up at the top so that you guys can see what I'm talking about because I just keep mentioning it and then that's not really helping anyone. Oh my gosh, A Heart So Fierce and Broken. That's what the second book was called. I don't like how that one looks. Which is weird because I like green. Infinity Reaper. You know, I heard a lot about Adam Silvera's fantasy books when they were about to come out and then almost nothing after. Just a thought. <gasps> All the Tides of Fate. I was really excited for this one too. This is the sequel to... Why are there so many long titles? I can only think of A Curse of Dark and Lonely right now. Um... All the Stars and Teeth. I loved that. It was kind of like a little bit of a Little Mermaid retelling, but also like Ursula. I believe. It was really good. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Oh, The Project. This is a thriller that I was really anticipating. I think this was also in that list. There's a lot of good books coming out right now. Dang. This isn't the cover I remember for it, though. I think that... Oh, Barnes & Noble has an exclusive cover. I kind of like the original one better. Yeah, I like the original one better. I appreciate the red, but I just think that it pops so much better with the black background. This is the one I want. Yes, pretty books. Oh my gosh. Barnes & Noble is exposing me. We might want to switch gears soon, even though- Oh, Infinity Quartz! This one I was also anticipating. I mean, just to be fair, this cover is just so stunning. Uh, so it's the Infinity Quartz by Akemi Don Bowman, and I didn't know anything about it, but I'd seen the cover and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna want to read that this year. And it says, Westworld meets Warcross in this high-stakes, dizzyingly smart sci-fi about a teen girl navigating an afterlife in which she must defeat an AI entity on destroying intent on destroying humanity. That kind of gives me like the hundred vibes. If any of you have watched the hundred, let me know. Like, are you kind of getting those vibes? Fat Chance, Charlie Vega. I think that this was another one that I was really interested in. Charlie, who is a fat brown girl on a journey of self-acceptance while the world, including her mother, is telling her she needs to be thinner, lighter, and quieter. Just balancing her relationship and a budding romance. Wait, yeah, I definitely want to read that. 
Ruthless Gods. I actually got that from Owlcrate. I need to get the second book. Oh, I guess that's on my wish list. I listened to the first one on audio and I, if I remember correctly, the first book, people had issues with like fight scenes. Like they thought that the pacing was really strange for them. And I think that the author was kind of rude about it, but <laughs> I think that listening to it on audio really helped me because I didn't notice any of those strange pacing issues. I don't know, audio is easy to flow through those kinds of things. So if you're ever having issues with things like that, maybe try checking out the audiobook from your library because that's what I did. Let's go to my pretty books area because I think that's intriguing. Oh, Catherine House. I actually, wait, do I have that or not? Oh no, I got Plain Bad Heroines. <gasps> I still want Catherine House. Oh, I've heard such mixed things about that one because it's a dark academia novel and everyone was just right in like the, the flow of dark academia in like october -y, November of last year. And everyone was so excited that it was coming out and then a lot of people didn't like it. But then I think it was very polarizing because a lot of people also did. I love the Barnes and Nobles collectible editions of books. I think that they're really fun to collect, obviously, but I tend to try and wait until they're on sale, which right now they're not because they're obviously $25 hairs. But like, look how beautiful their books are. I don't know if I would want them all. What ones would you want? Let's look at the... I really like this Dracula version. I do have a really cool Dracula book though that I got from Argentina that my cousin actually brought me from Argentina and it's really beautiful. It's like a classic edition as well. So I don't necessarily need that one, even though I think the one that I have is in Spanish. That edition of Wuthering Heights has always been just like something I would want because I read Wuthering Heights when I was a junior in high school because because of Twilight, because of Twilight. And I had to do a book report on a classic and I chose Wuthering Heights and I was bored out of my mind. I don't know how Bella Swan could have read that over and over again. It was boring, <sighs> but I would want the book because I read it, you know? I don't like that pink version of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, honestly. I do kind of like this purple edition of Picture of Dorian Gray, but I also like the edition I already have. Honestly, the biggest win is the fact that like the children's classics, even though they look like as high quality as their normal ones, are only $10. Sometimes I just get that if I'm like strolling around Barnes and Noble and I don't want to spend a lot of money, but I want something. I want the Call of the Wild. I like how I say sometimes I get that even though I don't have any of the children's classics. I mean, I pick them up and then I don't end up buying them. Like what we're doing right now. Window shopping without the windows on Apple. Oh, that was such a bad pun. Ooh, Divine Comedy, I like that edition. That would be really fun to add. I could sit here all day doing this. Ooh, I've always wanted to read The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. For the longest time, I didn't know that they were supposed to be the same person. Like one person with the two fighting personalities. Oh, this looks pretty. Oh my gosh, let's go to my book depository list because I have way more books on there in my wish list. I don't know the password then. Are you kidding me? That is it. That was so weird. I guess I forgot my password, which I think is highly unlikely, but whatever, <laughs> it's fine. But we're in. Let's go to my wish list. Oh yeah, see this has more pretty editions. I really like those uh, cloth bound classics. I think they're really stunning. Again, I picked out Tess of the Durbervilles because that, that was another classic I read in school because of another book. Uh, if you've read Fifty Shades of Grey, that's why. And it's kind of ironic because Fifty Shades of Grey was based off of Twilight. So like Tess of the D'Urbervilles was Anastasia's version of Wuthering Heights for Bella. And I read both of them, junior then senior year. But I still think the cloth bound is kind of ugly, but it's fine. Great Expectations. I still haven't read a Charles Dickens novel, but I'm pretty sure that's the one that starts like, it was, oh no, that's Tale of Two Cities. I would rather have Tale of Two Cities than the, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, you know? That's like my life every single day. I wake up and I'm like, ah, it's the best. Ah, it's also the worst. Anyways, um, <laughs> The Odyssey, this is a stunning cover. I've been wanting to reread it too. Frankenstein, another lovely edition. I do have the cool like Barnes and Noble kind of cloth bound one, but I like this a lot. Jabberwocky and other nonsense. You can't really see it very well here. I don't know why the quality is so terrible. I remember when these Patrick Ness books were like the thing on booktube. This was probably 2013, 2014. I'd bought that book and I was bored within like the first chapter, unfortunately. But then I'd seen these black editions and I'm like, oh, maybe I should get into it. Oh, these like fancy slipcase Harry Potter books. I'll never get them now. This is this is an old wish list. Wow. This is kind of fun. This is things that I added when I was like 
five years younger than I am now. Wow, and you can tell. Oh, this is, I've had a few questions about this. Um, the Game of Thrones novels that I got are the hardback reissue editions. They're not made anymore and they're really pricey and I accidentally missed out on my chance to get the original one because they're not made anymore and I can't find them anywhere for like a decent price. But they're really cool looking versus like the classic editions. Oh, Six of Crows. I have been wanting this collector's edition and then there is one for Crooked Kingdom too, I think. But I've been wanting it for so long since the moment it came out. And I always look at it and then I'm like, no, no, I don't need it. I don't need it. But this is definitely one of those things that I would 1000% get if given the opportunity. Isn't there a Crooked Kingdom one or am I losing it? Oh, this is such an unnecessary thing because I definitely already have a few really cool editions of Shadow and Bone, but the collector's edition with the slipcase, so fancy. I also kind of want, now that I'm rereading it, The Lives of Saints. I love beautiful books. It's something I don't know how to explain and I'm not going to try and explain it. There's something in my brain that sees something pretty and goes, yes, I need that, even though I 1000% do not need that. And hopefully if you're watching this video, you are similar to me, but if not, I hope you're having fun judging me. I would be having fun too. What else? What else is on this list? Ah, Name of the Wind. This is like the UK editions, I believe. I really like them. They're, oh, they're very stunning. I still haven't read The Wise Man's Fear, which maybe I'll do that this year when I'm back into reading, you know? I think that that would be the thing because it was such a good book. It just took a lot out of me, brain power right wise. That was actually the first audiobook I ever listened to. And I listened to it on one time speed and it was like over... 24 hours if I remember correctly. It lasted my entire trip to Cancun. It was great. Ooh, City of Brass. This is, this is, oh no, they don't, <gasps> did I miss out on my opportunity to buy this? Oh, that hurts. I guess they don't make it anymore. Oh, damn, no. I'm gonna find it. I am going to find it. No, this is the paperback. I want the hardcover of the UK editions. They're so much prettier in my opinion than the US editions. And this is another book that I really have been telling myself not to read until I'm definitely in the mood to read again because it's something that I think I will love, but if I do it when I wasn't in the mood, then I wasn't going to have a good time. So I'm really excited that I'm getting back into the mood because now I'm like, there's so many books that I wanna read right now because I've been holding off on it for a year. <laughs> Oh, these are the cool editions of Vicious and Vengeful. I probably won't ever get them. They didn't impress me that much. Like they were cool, but they weren't like, was that it? I feel like there's definitely more things. Oh, oh, let's go to my Amazon wish list because that one, I add a lot of things all the time. I would go to Goodreads, but I haven't updated Goodreads like consistently in so long. And I just know that if I open up the app, I'm gonna, I'm gonna want to. If you guys were wondering, I recently locked my bookish wish list. I like to add things onto my Amazon wish list for me to keep track of things because I am very much like an out of sight, out of mind kind of person. So I will literally forget about anything if I don't add it in some sort of list. Even though I really love and appreciate everyone who would send me books, I started feeling very bad about it because I wasn't reading, because I haven't been really in the mood to read. And I just felt weird accepting so many gifts from you guys when I just felt like I, I, I should be reading them. You know, like that is more of what I would want to do. And also I just felt, uh, I don't know, I just felt strange, like constantly hauling them as much as, again, I really appreciate the sentiment and everything behind it. I just, I just felt weird about it. So it is locked again. I don't think that you can get access to it even if you have a link. So if you were wondering about that, that's what happened. Ooh, this is something that one of you guys was telling me about. Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. It was in my last video when I said I liked The Hating Game and you guys told me that if I really liked The Hating Game, I would love The Spanish Love Deception. So this is definitely one of those that I would love to get, but book buying ban. Actually, everything buying ban. This is just a beautiful book. I don't, I haven't seen anyone talk about this. I don't even know what it's about. I just saw it pop up on my like page at the start of Amazon and I'm like, that's beautiful. I would like it. <laughs> that's what I mean when my wish list is just so confused. I mean, look at this. I have a Gotham City cocktails book. I want coffee table books and I don't even have a house yet to display them in. I can't explain to you the workings of my minds. They don't make sense. Oh, this is something I saw Books and Lala use or read for her Enneagram style video. I love her videos that do that where it's like reading like my sun sign or my Enneagram or whatever. And I've never understood the Enneagram. Like I still don't necessarily know whether I'm an eight or a seven. 
I feel like I'm a seven, but the thing is, is like eight is, there was like a test I took and the thing was, is if you respond with anger, you're an eight. And that is my response to uh, basically anything that upsets me. So I wanted to read this, the millenniagram, to try and decipher which one I actually am. Oh, look at this. This is another coffee table book that I wanted. The anime art of Hayao Miyazaki. Isn't it beautiful? I want it. Just look at all these really cool books. Look at this one. I want it. I'm telling you, no rhyme or reason at all. All. Oh, A Question of Homes. I never realized that I didn't read the last book in the Charlotte Holmes series or owned it. I definitely still want that. Hello Girls, I read that last year. I really, really, really liked it. So I would like to also own it. Bunny is a weird one. Let me know if you guys have read this because I still don't know whether I would actually want to read this or not. It's told in like group perspective, like we, I think. It just sounds strange to me. It's a thriller. I just don't know. We can be here all day. I think we've already been here for over 30 minutes. So maybe I should stop. More Clothbound Classics. Oh, wait, this is really pretty. I forgot about this. See, this is what I mean. This is why I have lists. The Wonderland collection, but it's like black and, or red and white. It's so pretty. Wait, what's this? Jane, oh, this is like a whole collections edition. That's really cool. Okay. Maybe, maybe I'll look more into that. No, I don't don't need anything else. Yeah, okay, I think that's what all we're gonna talk about today. Actually, let's let's leave it off on like a really pretty book that I've wanted for a while. I'm sure I can find one. I knew they had a crooked kingdom. I knew it, but that wasn't what I was looking for. Oh, let me, this one has to be good. Let me think, let me think, let me think, let me think. Shoot, I'm trying to think and I can't think of one. That's probably for the best, right? Actually, even better. I'm, <laughs> I can't think of a book that's beautiful that I haven't bought myself yet. I'm sure, I'm sure there's so many. Again, I like pretty things, but I can't think of one off on the spot. So we'll leave off on this one, which is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I really am conflicted about this one because I want to read it and I don't want to read it because I think that emotionally I'm just... I'm just not there right now, if that makes any sense. I know that totally makes sense. That makes sense. It also seems like such a great book. I don't know. I feel like I would want to read The Starless Sea and then read this. Like if I, if, like, I just feel like they give me similar vibes. Does that make sense? Probably doesn't. And see, that's what it would happen if we talked about in the next video, like book comparisons off the top of my head to new releases because I would do that. I'd be like, I feel like they have the same vibe. Does that make any sense? Because I haven't read either of them. So no, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> That's going to be it, I guess, for this video today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was definitely more low key, more chit chatty. You guys seem to respond really well also to like my TikTok video that I was more chatty with you guys in. So I think that this would be fun. Just definitely a fun kind of series to have on my channel. Maybe we can like discuss new releases that are coming out. We can just like sit there and kind of go through things and talk about books that we wish we could buy. I don't know, leave me any comments down below on like what you think I could do with this kind of series. I think it's fun. It's not spending any money. We can both go window shopping on our own. You're not spending any money or, may or maybe you are. It's, that's on you though. And we can just talk and chat and have fun. But also let me know if there are any beautiful books that you have wanted for a million years and you haven't bought yourself either because either they're like way too pricey or you just know that you don't need it. You just really want it. That'll be it for this video today. Let's think of a emoji. Leave a like little money flying away symbol. Even though we didn't spend any money, that's going to be it for this video today, guys. I hope you had fun. I definitely did. So this is definitely going to happen again. I don't know in what way or in what manner, but expect it because I had a lot of fun and I hope you guys do too. Otherwise, I'll still be doing this and no one will be watching. But <laughs> That's going to be it for this video today, guys. I love you all so, so much and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.